So I got some of these Zigbee Fingerbot Plus devices. And they were damaged when I got them. You can see a crack right here. I've got another one that's damaged even more. And I attempted to send them back and ultimately I got a credit through PayPal. But I was trying to decide if I could get value out of these, even though they were broken upon delivery. And so I opened it up and did a little inspection to see if I could do some repair on this one because this little arm wouldn't even move all the way down. Right now you can see it does move down because I've done a little bit of work on it. I'll show you what the inside looks like and some of the screws that you can't see. So once you take the battery out, you'll see a couple little screw holes, one deep inside there one right here, and I've removed these screws with a tiny little Phillips head. And then I didn't see any other screws, and so I kind of brute forced the thing with some needle nose. I grabbed onto this little piece of plastic and this piece of plastic here and just yanked it straight out to see if it was just friction fit or if those were the only two screws that were holding it in place. And I'll show you what I found. So what I found were these four screws two of which I could see from the other side and I actually removed them. This one was a very long screw, skinny, long screw. And this one here was a uh, short screw, but the ones I couldn't see were behind the circuit board on top here and here. And to access those, I didn't realize it at the time, but I simply needed to remove this circuit board and then I could see and that's just using this foam adhesive to secure it. I took it off and I could see some, uh, some screw holes here and here. Now, since I brute forced it, uh, I simply just broke them off, which is kind of a bummer, but this was a damaged product anyway, and it's not the end of the world. And furthermore, I can glue this thing back in place if I need to because I've fatally damaged the screws as well as the screw holes. Regardless, for now, what I'll probably end up doing is, by the way, also you can see the, uh, the button inside. It's just that little touch sensitive button right there on the top of the plastic. There's a little thing of metal. I, I don't know exactly how that button works, but there's a single wire coming from it that activates the switch, which turns the little motor in here. And uh, the way this works, I'll show you. There's a little gear inside here. Let's see if that focuses. There's a little gear inside here that turns whenever you activate the button. I'll put the battery back in to show you specifically. So the battery's in. You can see the light on the circuit board now. Maybe. Again. Light on the circuit board. Now if I press the button, I'm going to try to get this in focus so you can see. If I press the button, you see that little motor and gear move. And what that does... I'll get the other piece and show you what that does here. On this little arm, the finger, the finger part of the finger bot, it actually interfaces. It's got teeth that interface with this gear. And when that gear slides up and down, this finger, it's actually upside down and backwards, but this finger will actually slide up and down this little channel here, thereby pressing a button. But that's just sort of a dissection of a Fingerbot Plus. This is a Zigbee version that I have running with Home Assistant. And uh, not sure if that would be useful for anybody else to see the insides of a Fingerbot Plus and how it operates. But that's essentially what it is. And just thought I would share that. If I'm going to put this back together, or I'll probably do, get the battery out so I'm not constantly turning it on and off. Resecure the circuit board using that same foam adhesive and then place it back inside, oriented correctly, inside the little enclosure. 
course, with this inside because I missed that part. And then I would probably just glue the screws that I have uh, broken off. I would just glue that to the front face inside this small enclosure here and it would be right as rain, at least I think. As long as I don't use so much glue that it glues the gears or the finger part of the finger bot shut. Anyway, there you go. Thanks.